Yo, 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 what is going on, guys? Hope everyone's having a fantastic day. Hope you guys are enjoying, enjoying your Memorial Day weekend. Glad to be back, back in my normal, usual setup. Some ill, some, I can't even talk today, so please just ignore all that. But some Philadelphia Eagles news. Some things I want to go over that I didn't go over because I was gone the past couple days. So I kind of want to reminisce on some things and kind of talk about some things. So get straight to it. Well, what is going on, guys? So the past couple of days have not been around, but have been looking at the news of the Philadelphia Eagles. Some things I didn't really hit on, and I kind of want to go over some things and some new things that are happening, not just with us, but with the Cowboys and Jason Peters. I kind of want to talk about a little, a hit on a little bit of that as well. Um, so I won't take up most of your time here. Now, first, I want to just go over in general the Andre Dillard fractured forearm, whatever the case may be with this. It's not serious. It's a stress fracture. He'll be out five weeks. But I think due time, I think he'll be up for a trade. And I remember we saw the news about Jalen Rager trade, you know, trade market heating up. A lot of teams are calling about Andre Dillard as well. As much as I didn't really like what I saw from him in preseason, I know he took over a couple games from Jordan Mulata last year when he was out. And I thought he played pretty solid. I have to give her, you know, respect where respect is due. I thought he played pretty good as a backup left tackle for this team. Um Unfortunately, you know, with this injury, you know, you have Josh Stills, Sills that's still on this roster, made the roster, so maybe they see something in him. Could La Raven Clark was just not cutting it out for me at all as our backup left tackle, right guard, right tackle because he played multiple positions, but the guy just can't stay healthy um, and just is not a great player. Josh Sills, we'll see what he does. Um, you know, and I know that Sills is another player that can play multiple positions. I think he played four to five. He played four to five uh, different positions in college. So, I mean, maybe they see something in him where he's more of a project, but um, he is learning very, very quick and very fast. And obviously you got the best offensive line coach in Jeff Statlin. So uh, I think, you know, with the fifth year option, Andre Dillard after this year, it's twelve and a half million dollars. The Eagles are definitely not picking it up, but Howie Roseman is not going to let a player just walk off this team without getting something for him. So I would look out for the week nine trade deadline and look out for, a trade this coming future for Dillard. Obviously, if Mulata goes down, then you're going to have a little bit of a problem, and then you're going to be trusting Josh Sills a lot at left tackle. So um, Jalen Hurts is blindside, so not a great thing. But, I mean, who knows? I don't know how Josh Sills is doing as a left tackle. Maybe he's cross-training, playing multiple positions. So we'll see what happens. But from all I know, he's playing left tackle as of right now. And the Eagles are giving him a big shot and maybe has played more than better because we don't see the joint practices. Maybe he played really good in the joint practices that we don't know of. But with Dillard, okay, you know, going to miss probably five weeks. This isn't the end. And I think by week nine, the trade deadline, when there's a team out there that needs a left tackle or offensive line help in general, I think Andre Dillard might be that piece for somebody. And look, the only way I was really trading Andre Dillard right now at this moment is if we were getting a first or a second round pick. Is he worth that? No, because people are like, how can you say that? He's not even worth that. I understand. I understand it. Trust me. I understand. But Howie Rosen's very good at trades. Because it's tough for me to, when you don't have a backup blindside premier position at left tackle like this, you know, it hurts you a little bit if you're starting left tackle goes down and then it's going to be a tough season ahead. And the Eagles will have to look for a trade or will have to force their own hand to do something or make a move if they don't trust anybody else on this roster. So I would definitely look out for him, you know, hopefully a good speedy recovery for Andre Dillard. You know, the next, you know, five to six weeks, um, you know, seven weeks, I would say. And, and we'll and we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens with Dillard. So, um, you know, could be a big trade down the line because Howie Rose was not going to let him walk from this team from nothing. So I think they're going to maybe try to get something done down the line would make more sense. Now, uh, Chauncey Gardner Johnson's definitely uh, still a surprising trade that we did for fifth, six round picks. And you know what? And I think Chauncey Gardner Johnson, how Gannon is going to use him. I think they're going to, he's going to be our Malcolm Jenkins piece, guys. Like, I don't think he's strictly just going to be a safety. I think he'll move around depending on matchups every week, depending on the offense that we do face. 
Um, you know, because the coaches, as of right now, until the season starts, they're not going to tell us what they're doing. Even all of this preseason training camp, joint practice, they weren't going to give up, and they weren't going to give up what they were doing with some of these players and how they're going to use them. They're going to keep offenses guessing on how they're going to use Chauncey Gardner Johnson. And it's just funny because his Twitter handle says below average. Brandley Gowan, some of the Eagles beat writers have been talking a lot of crap that, you know, because he played more nickel than he has safety. You know, can he even play safety? And I think one of these remarks he put on his Twitter handle, which I, I love his attitude. I love his swagger. Um, he's a bully. His mindset is meant for this city um, and how he plays is meant for this city. And I think it's really going to show out and he's going to fit here really well. And this man's going to get paid a lot of money come next year in 2023 or an extension will happen at the end of this year. We'll see. But uh, Chauncey is definitely going to get a big deal after this year. There's no doubt about it. This is our future safety. And I couldn't, I, and not to even expect, like, look, I didn't expect this to even happen because I figured they were going to keep every, everything the way it was. And look, I, I love that Anthony Harris is on practice squad. I don't know why Kavallon Wallace is on the active roster. All talk, no play. The biggest pose I've ever seen in a safety in my life. Came and play special teams or make plays on special teams either. But I would really like to put Anthony Harris where Kavon Wallace is as the number three safety had Reed Blankenship as your number four. And I think your depth is really good there. So I was actually really happy Anthony Harris returned, which makes it even better if you could just at least take Kavon Wallace off. Maybe a team will pick him up. I don't know. From the practice squad, maybe somebody will pick him up. But uh, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson has just uh, is definitely going to fit really well here. Already getting along with everybody and... Um, I can't wait to see him make plays because I don't think he's just going to play safety this year. I think they're going to move him all over the place. And look what Malcolm Jenkins did to our, even the Super Bowl run that we had. I mean, you know, not saying that Ronald Darby and Jalen Mills were the best corners, but damn, I mean, without Malcolm Jenkins, this defense would not work. <laughs> it didn't work because he bandaged up a lot of positions. You want him to play safety, you want him to play corner, linebacker, you name it. They put him in any spot for matchups in general. Plus, be a good thing because Gar uh, Garner Johnson's really good at, at covering tight ends as well, and he's been very good. Um, you know uh, his his uh, run defending and and just he's tackling is just a plus and just uh, does a really good job. So I I think it's just funny. I just he uses stuff like this as motivation, and I love it. I, I I'm I can't even be upset about it. And lastly, Jason Peters. We're hearing a lot of rumors. Jason Peters going to the Cowboys. Apparently had his physical. And I think by Monday, probably by tomorrow, we'll hear that he signed. I don't know if he's going to get a bigger contract. Probably asking for a lot of money. I mean, if you guys remember Jason Peters in free agency this past year was pretty much like, oh, I want to go to a contending team or you want to be a mentor or I don't know what he wants to do. But it's hard to see Jason Peters going to be in a Cowboys uniform. Um, <clears throat> and... Just to let the Cowboys fans know, like Jason Peters, I, I don't know as much as I, I think I wouldn't trust Jason Peters on the Cowboys right now if he's going to be a pat if he's going to uh, he's going to be a pass defender or whatever the case may be. OK, um, I think they're going to use him more as a run blocker because I think he's just going to be better at this point in his age over 40 years old. OK. I don't know if his pass blocking is going to be as good as it has been because we had problems with Jason Pierce because every time we brought him back every single year, he's had an issue with having energy during games. Like he would be in for the first quarter, be out the second quarter, be half of the third quarter. It was just ridiculous to where it was just like this guy came and stand up in games anymore because he's just old. And that's just the way it is. I would have brought Andrew, if I was the Cowboys, I would have brought Andrew Whitworth back out of retirement unless they tried that move and it just didn't happen. Because you have a running back in Ezekiel Elliott's getting paid $18 million and they got to use him. Really, since the new contract of Ezekiel Elliott, he's only had one good year out of it and that's pretty much it. That's it. And hasn't done anything since, even though I like Tony Pollard better in that running back uh, system because I think he's, he does great in the passing game, great runner, uh, good on special teams. He just brings more to the table. So I think this is Zeke's last year of his deal, if I'm not mistaken. But I think you would use Jason Peters in that format as a run blocker more than pass protection because I, I would not even trust Jason Peters in his pass protection. Love Jason Peters to death. I think he should have been. And I think this screwed us up too because – 
even when we drafted Andre Dillard, they already had Jason Peters here. Remember what, after when the first year of Andre Dillard going to the second year of Andre Dillard, Jason Peters was going to play right guard. And then Dillard got hurt and they moved him back to left tackle and Jason Peters stole a lot of money from the Philadelphia Eagles. He got a brand new deal, got paid more money and still couldn't stand up in games. So I don't know. And I'm not just saying this, he's going to be on the Cowboys. I just don't think he has it anymore. And that's just the way it is. Like if he didn't go to the Cowboys and God forbid, like, you know, if they needed a left tackle or the Eagles need a left tackle to be here, I, I don't even know if having Jason Peters here would really benefit this team, to be honest with you. You know, if he didn't sign, if he wasn't going to sign with the Cowboys, I don't know. It's a very slow process, what's going on. I want to see what this contract looks like because I'm telling you right now, it's probably going to be a nice, hefty one year deal to two year deal, whatever the case may be. Because, I mean, Tyron Smith has been hurt almost every single year for the Cowboys. And he's always said, oh, I feel great. I've, even this year, he said the same thing. Tyron Smith during training camp, he was like, oh, I feel this is the best I've ever felt in years. And then all of a sudden he says that and he gets hurt. You know what I mean? So it is what it is. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, with Jason Peters, I just, he's just very washed. Very washed. And, you know, he's, he's at the very end of his career. Probably should already retire. How well he's going to do for them. If he can stay healthy, then yeah, he'll be pretty good. Uh, pass protection, I don't think he's going to be great. Run blocking, I think he'll he'll do a lot better in the run blocking scheme. If they're going to run the ball a lot, plus the Cowboys don't have another receiver, what are they going to do? I heard T.Y. Hilton. I've t I mean, Cole Beasley can come back. I don't know what they're doing at receiver unless they feel like they're set at that position as of right now. So we'll see what happens, guys. But that's pretty much it. That is all the news for the Philadelphia Eagles. I want to touch on the Jason Peters thing going to the Cowboys and all that stuff. Uh, but I will see you guys on the next one. Shakes going up, follow slide. Peace out, guys. Peace.